Good morning. You're listening to Drinking Socially, the official Untapped podcast. Your weekly look into what's happening in the Untapped community and the world of beer. Beer, beer, beer. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Untapped and the Untapped store. Use the coupon code podcast to get 20% off your next purchase. That's store.untapped.com. Coupon code is podcast. Save some dough, grab some cool stuff, and tag us on your Instagram photos when you wear it or something. Um, and speaking of Instagram and things that are likable, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, TikTok us, if that's if I'm using that correctly. We're hoping to do giveaways soon of what? Good question. I don't know. I have a lot of old shoes. I don't know what to do with. Maybe we'll start there. But those giveaways, they'll probably be tied to something like likes. So jump on that train early and like and subscribe away. And now quick, Harrison, off the top of your head, what day is it? Or even what year is it? Or better still, who cares? Yeah. It's been a really rough go for the last bit or months or years. <laughs> um, and time, time was like my biggest casualty. It stopped being important. And really, regardless of what day it is, we all know really at our hearts what year it is. It is the year of the lager. And we're featuring the Lager Jack badge, which really isn't that difficult to earn, but it is isn't that easy to master. And if you play your cards right or drink your beers right this week, there could actually be an easy two for one badge uh, with the American Craft Beer Week that Harrison's going to tell us about in a minute. But okay, so there are other lager focused badges on Untapped. And one of them I'm really dreading talking about in an episode in the future. But before we cover the all American badge, let's <laughs> keep it simple. Like walking into a forest and turning it into an Airbnb compound, full log cabins and cold <laughs> fermented beer. We're not going to be chopping any trees down today, sadly. Uh, we're not even going to be using an axe. But if I were a lumberjack, I'm willing to bet my loggerjack badge would be maxed out by now. Harrison, how would I get there? Tell me about this badge. Yes, let's do it. I'm pumped. We're looking good. If you're on YouTube, John looks amazing. I look normal, but um, look that's lumber okay. Jackie, man. Don't lumber sell Jackie. yourself short. Right. I've got my axes behind me right there. It's a different kind. The old uh, ukulele. That's right. That's it. That's the old trumpet and the old sousaphone. Always out of tune. Um, all right. Lager Jack. <laughs> badge time. So, as John mentioned, pretty straightforward badge to earn. Um, you just have to check in five beers that are a lager. We'll talk more about the badge in a bit, the details of it, what's unlocked and all that stuff. But let's start with the description, as always. After a long day, what better way to kick back than with a crisp and refreshing lager? You're already feeling more relaxed, aren't you? I am. Magic. It's the power of uh, <laughs> persuasion or whatever. And as John mentioned again in the beginning, if you are listening to this um, now, the day came out, well, whatever, you are listening to this now, but if you're listening to the day, the week it came out, um, you are right in the middle of American Craft Beer Week, uh, which is always a great time. I have tons of amazing memories about this. It was always a chore leading up to it because we were brewing a lot of beer and doing tons of collaborations back in the day, but always fun when this week got here and we go out and celebrate. And so Untapped has actually teamed up with the Brewers Association to invite all you guys to toast local businesses that have endured these tougher times and ensure that the, our glasses, growlers, and beer fridges are remaining full. And of course, a badge. So yeah, two for one this week. If you haven't earned this badge yet, it's pretty simple to earn the American Craft Beer badge as well. You should check in any beer from an American independent craft brewery between May 10th and May 16th of 2021, answer to John's earlier what year is a question, 2021, um, <laughs> that's it, and you get this badge, but I'm, I'm pumped about it, so hopefully you're unlocking a few right now as you enjoy your uh, next lager with us, and speaking of, we should say lagers, because 
This night's going to get a little bit better for us. We're going to enjoy not one, but two. So, John, where are we starting? What's up? Uh, what is up first? Uh, to be clear, I'm only drinking one beer, right, but too, I, sure. I like where your head's at, Harrison. <laughs> um, so to kick things off, I'm drinking a beer, which is technically local to me. It's from Burial uh, out in originally Asheville, North Carolina. I've actually been fortunate enough to visit them in Raleigh. And this is a new one from them. It's a beer called Rust. It pours beautifully Ooh, in this glass. Look at that. Look at that glass. Good um, glass. You, yeah, it's hard to read the glass on YouTube, but I picked it up from one of my favorite <laughs> bottle shops. Uh, I'm going to tangent. This This is a beer recommended by Charles. The beer's name is Lager. We get it, Charles. Your family now. Um, so aside from that, okay, so we're, I'm drinking a beer f- from Burial. It's called Rust. And it's, I think, brand new from Burial. Here's a really cool stat on Untapped. This is technically a lager, a Vienna-style lager, and it rates at four stars on Untapped for a lager that's pretty unheard of. Burial gives us a pretty cool story, um, and they begin with blood on the blade, pure is the hand. A tangent back to where we already were. A beer that should have been made years ago, made only with German pills and Vienna malts. We then steep mash before a hearty decoction as rite of tradition. The beer is fermented low and slow, under pressure, collecting natural carbonation along the way. We gave it a proper lagering and stuck it in these vessels for your repeatable enjoyment. And by vessel, I believe they mean a 16-ounce can, which is right where I'm enjoying this one from. I'm going to start drinking, Harrison. What do you got over there? That's a cool-looking can as well. Yeah, so I'm also doing kind of some burial lager tour tonight, keeping it somewhat local, some North Carolina lagers i'm excited to hear john's first sips in a moment but i'm enjoying inner tube which is a great name for a lager maybe one of the most perfectly named lagers ever (laughs) um it is and it's actually an american light lager so again for burial uh it comes in at 3.5 percent abv so you'll be safe and upright on that uh, inner tube as long as you want to be 11 ibus uh, actually carries a 3.61 out of 5 on untaps. Also doing really well, especially for an American light lager. And much like John, I also have my Charles glass out. And Charles is a bit of a local legend here. He works at Hay Beer, a, a bottle shop we've mentioned many a time before. And as the glass suggests, a big fan of the lager. So cheers to you, Charles. Um, and mine's a little easier to see with that nice crisp. Look at that clear as day. Though. Your That's beer looks like the lager I think of, Harrison. Right, exactly. So, and from the brewery, it's a burial, of course, even with a light lager, it's going to have some fun with the pros here. A righteous revelation in our truth set adrift on the river of refreshment. Perhaps our most passionately crafted libation This season, this beer serves more as a lifesaver to those of us struggling through a new normal. American pills, corn, and rice meet German hops in the ultimate sunshine companion. So I'm already sold as if I wasn't uh, on this. So I'm going to enjoy my first sip. But John, how is rust treating up there? It looks amazing. Yeah, there's not a lot of sipping going on for this one. Anybody that's listened to the show for a while knows that I'm a huge fan of an Oktoberfest beer. And you heard me mention that this is listed as a Vienna lager, which for me in my amateur tasting skills is almost indiscernible between a a good Oktoberfest beer. And that's right where this is hitting me. It's like it's sweet graham sweet cracker biscuit on the front and then it just finishes really clean and dry i've never seen this beer from burial before but i i hope they they keep this around this is like the year round this is oktoberfest in may for me i'm really yeah. thrilled about it i i'm drinking it re- faster we don't have to talk Good. about how fast i'm drinking it how's yours harrison Appro- yes you're drinking it at the appropriate <laughs> speed um yeah. Delicious. So yeah, so I great right, again. Obviously, mine's lighter than John's. Totally, really, I mean, it's a lager, but a totally different approach to it. 
Uh, and it's amazing. I mean, so I saw 3.75 percent, and I was two thoughts immediately hit my mind of like, yes, this could be my summer beer, my everyday sipper, perfect. But also the worry of like, ah, oh, will this be too thin? 3.5 is low, man. Like <laughs> you um, could drive with that beer in Mississippi, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Going to work, going to work. Um, <laughs> Depending on how your Monday's handling you, but yeah. So, um, but yeah, this is this is delicious. Not it's it's amazing. I can't believe it's three point five percent. It holds up like a like a five percent kind of American lager would. It's 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 got some nice body to it. It's bubbly, the right amount of bubbles. That's a big thing with lagers is kind of the mouthfeel, of course. And breweries tend to carbonate them a little higher than. IPAs and stouts and the like, uh, bigger beers to help it kind of just dance on the tongue a bit. So that's happening. Um, but it's it's not like I'm – it's it's just got so much – it's like a nice kind of corn sweet flavor to it. But it's not corny. It's like a corn note and just like this smooth, refreshing river of a beer. And it's going to be tough to um, make it last the rest of the episode. So I may be – wheeling off screen and then wheeling back on screen for another one. But this is awesome. And it is, I mean, I, I am going to go get more of this. It's before it disappears from town because this is exactly what I want a light lager to taste like. Um, and yeah, 3.5% to boot. I'm pumped. Is it Harrison? Do you think it's the year of the lager because we all just kind of miss a uh, semblance of, normalcy or like something we're used to and and lagers even though ipas kind of rule the world i feel like lagers are they're my meatloaf and mashed potatoes of beer like they're my comfort beer that's right you're well you're hmm. yep it's the the girl next door if you will the one that uh that from everyone's past that uh every time you come back home the first one you want to meet up with so we're keeping that loving where this is going (laughs) (laughs) so we'll stop there but um, but no. What I'm trying to say is, yes, there is some comfort here. There's something that feels familiar returning to this style, even though John and I drink lagers all the time. But um, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's it's something that's easy and comfortable. It's it's also you know got this great consistency to it. To you know, a good lager, t- you know, tastes the same today as it did when you were in college. Maybe a little different, but um. But I think Hard it's even changed, not the right the beer, <laughs> right the memories that have faded and become obscured by life and what have you. Uh, but yeah, I think that's fair to say, John, that it's it's it, perhaps we're willing loggers into maybe more of the craft mainstream. What I think it is maybe in tandem with that is kind of the realization that a lot of craft breweries are having that. You know, craft beer has been around, I mean, depending on when you want to, in America, at least when you want to start it, is it Sierra Nevada in the early 80s? Is it Anchor in the mid 70s? Is it really the 1990s when it kind of became crazy? So when the revolution began is kind of over debate. But what really is, I think, not debatable is that the craft beer, the original craft beer fans are getting older. And so as fun as pastry stouts are, when you're creeping up on 40, that's just not <laughs> going to be a smart decision as much as maybe it was when you were, you know, in your 30s or 20s. So having breweries brew an everyday beer that's calorie conscious, has a lot of flavor, easily approachable. I think we're going to see more and more of that as the craft that's beer a- drinker, again, kind of matures and, you know, wants to be able to have a beer in the afternoon, watch the game, but then go, you know, build a puzzle with the kids and then, you know, fix the sink and walk the dog and do a hundred other things um, and, and not get any sleep that night. So um, it's important. describing right. everyone's weekend. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's important. Sink's with, broken. I'm taking right. a walk. Exactly. Right. I'm, I'm out. I'll fix it later. I'm out of here. I got to go check <laughs> on the thing, the woods, make sure the woods are still there. I'll be back next Christmas. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it, it might be a little bit of that. And that's something that I kind of predicted would happen eventually, and maybe that's being a bit sped up. Or maybe we were just picking a lot of loggers because we like them and we're we're just willing our reality into being. But either way, I'm here for it. 
Couldn't agree more. I I love your point. It's not something I'd thought of or ever really talked about before, but your point about, you know, how like if if I can say I was part of the generation that grew up as craft beer was becoming more popular, replacing Coors Light, if you will. Now I'm old or older than I used to be and True. I have sink issues and I, and I need to walk around the block just to stay active. So yeah. I can understand a little bit the, uh, the embrace for that craft beer drinker to, to go with something they can keep up with. Is that yeah. wisdom catching up with me? There's a, there's an age thing that I don't, this isn't therapy. Let's not cover that yet. How about, um, <laughs> How about something brighter like the Logger Jack badge? Surely yes. this has been unlocked by a handful of people by now. Yeah, I mean, holy cow. So obviously, lager beer is the most consumed kind of beer in the world. So there are a ton of unlocks to this badge. And again, as a reminder, all you have to do is check into five different loggers. That's what levels you up. Um, 1.5 million <laughs> unlocks of this badge already. So impressive stuff and the top beers list kind of really reads right like a like an old like a college weekend for me um as well as a, a lot of memes of the past year the number one logger uh with thirty thousand plus unlocks of this badge to its name is corona grab a lime um Again, not surprising. Obviously, that beer is all over the place. Stella Artois jumps at number two, though, which is pretty cool. To oh, see that's Euro cool Lager. to see. Right. Very awesome. And then Heineken right after that, actually. And after that, right, it's kind of pick your ballpark, Bud Light, Coors Light, Budweiser. Yingling gets in there, which made me happy. Um, that was nice. one of the first, first, I think the third beer I had on my Lager Jack journey was, uh, or checked into was a, Gangling, Sam Adams is on here. <clears throat> and then PBR, which made me happy too. I feel like I have PBR is a check that I make because I often have it at a cool place, like a cool, cool music venue or wh whatever. And I'm like, I got to take a picture of where I am right now. Look at me. I have a PBR in my hand. So PBR um, I, somehow like transcended uh, uh, macro beer and became sort of like a, like a, like a, like a badge of honor, a testament to. I think sometimes maybe the people that drink it, but more so like the place that serves it. If you go into a sports bar and they have 13 IPAs on tap and you ask for something easier, they have PBR and you're like, yeah. all right, cool. This is a cool. Yeah. It's, it, I don't know. For some reason, PBR is more acceptable than Coors Light. It's you're right there. They've done a great job marketing, whatever you want to call it to kind of just getting this, that beer in a place where it's, I mean, there was a bar, I feel like I've told the story before, but there was a bar, my corner bar, when I lived in Philly called the Sidecar Bar that had PBR on tap all the time. And it was also one of the only places I had Pliny the Younger on tap. So imagine that juxtaposition of looking at a tap line, a bunch of tap lines and seeing PBR on the <laughs> left and Pliny the Younger on the right. And it worked. It wasn't like a joke or doing it to like be goofy or hipstery or whatever. It was in an old South Philly neighborhood, and it was like people come here after work, and some of them drink PBR. Have lived here for forty years, and some of them moved here last week, and they, you know, are hunting down, you, you know, whatever the next hot thing. So, and it was a really cool place because I mean, I, I hung out with people that were twice my age there, and a lot of great stories, a lot of great nights. A true kind of epitome of the bar is a crossroads, a meeting place, and not as of people, but of kind of the beers those people like. And they they killed it. It was so amazing how well it worked without being like, again, like a a gimmick. It was like, no, we're doing this. And it totally makes sense. So yeah, P I mean, PBR, right. It's kind of everywhere. Everyone kind of like likes it. It's like the norm of beers. It's just, uh, you know, like, great. Yeah, PBR. So kudos to them. And if you're in Philadelphia, you probably know of the citywide special. If not, and you're traveling there, know this if you you know if you get to philly one day the citywide special is called the citywide because it's available at almost every bar for in the city for about between like three and four bucks and a citywide special is a can of pbr and a shot of whatever bourbon for three dollars and it's always different you know which bourbon is it is it a 16 ounce or a 12 ounce can 
is you can go in almost any bar in Philadelphia and say, I'll take a citywide, and you'll get a shot and a beer, and it'll most of the time be PPR. So, and, and everyone, again, at places that are, you know, five-star Michelin-rated things, and then also, like, you know, the shot in a bottle bar that's been there, you know, since Philadelphia was just a patch of grass or whatever, a swamp in such a, the Delaware. So, um, yeah. A beautiful traveler's guide to Philadelphia. It explains <laughs> Philadelphia it does. I think it so does. much more than than I think you could if you just Googled them or went to Wikipedia. Like, yeah. what is Philadelphia? If you live in Sweden and you've never been to Philadelphia, but you've heard of it before, Philadelphia is a city that will give you uh, a, a lager and a shot of bourbon for three bucks. If you know that's the it. code, if you know that's exactly it. right, if you know what to say, that's exactly right. Just a big old, that's what it felt like living there. It felt like it was a big old fun club. Um, so miss it, but great list to me and a lot of history and all those beers we could do. We could really do a whole episode on right Coors light and Budweiser and yingling the first beer brewed after prohibition that I heard, a case of it showed up on the steps of the White House the day Prohibition ended, but it takes 28 days for mingling brewed to bottle. So we'll figure that out. Um, but uh, so again, a lot, tons of history here. I mean, you could make an easy comment. The last 20 years might have been the history of beer in America as the IPA, but the 200 years before that, it was the it, lager was the history of you know, growth history of America when it comes to True. beer. So and much of the world, um, and that's so much of the case. But um, cool stuff. So, uh, again, story names there. But to zoom in back to our journey here on the loggers, John, how are you doing on this loggery Jackie badge? Where are you at? What's happening? You know what? I'm I'm not proud of this one. I've uh, checked into 52 loggers on Untapped, which puts me at a level 10 um, I had uh, the most recent level up for me was drinking Lager Days from Noda, yeah. uh, which was your beer of the week a couple episodes ago. Right. And there's a local brewery that makes a smash yes. lager, single malt, single hop. I love that. That was a whole lot of fun. I hope they make more so I can keep leveling up this badge. Being only at level 10, I assume you've got you you are the human version of a lager. Harrison, please tell me you're beating me. I thought I'd be a little higher than I was. I'm going to be a little critical here, but also, I mean, looking through the list of the beers, my personal journey through the lager has been a lot of fun, a lot of memories in it. I'm at level 21, so I've had actually 108 loggers logged in, logged into, uh, into <laughs> Untap. <laughs> um, so far, it's almost at level 22. This will put me one away. Um, the most recently, the Munich Rye Lager from Highwire Brewing um, got me into level 21 um the first beer i had though was a beer from stout's brewing company which is outside of philly it used to be in adamstown pa uh, their golden lager which is a one of those beers you saw a lot on tons of taps around the city just a really very similar to this a little bit higher abv than in your two about five percent i think but it's one of those kind of everyday lagers that was so crisp and clean so that was fun i hadn't thought about that beer in years to look at that old logo and see where I checked it in and all that stuff. That was, um, that was fun. So again, we're going to keep drinking lagers as much as we can. Might need to change the name of the show to drinking loggerly. Drinking <laughs> loggerly. Logging loggerly. Logging. Uh, there's something there. Um, the rest of this season and our, our lives, but this is cool to take a little pit stop today and, I feel like there are more more logger adventures floating at the top of my mind now as we speak. Yep, I just as soon as you mentioned your first unlock, I had to go back and check mine really quick. Uh, PBR was number four, but my Ooh. first uh, checked in logger I was just uh, Takade. Oh yeah, like the authentic Corona, if you will. I was pretentious Oof. even back in 2015. Hot diggity dog. That was another beer that was all over the place in Philadelphia. Tecate. That was the beer that a lot of bands brought to nice. places that didn't have beer. And it was kind of cases of it sitting around for whatever reason. Someone had a lime somehow. and, and Did old you guys do and, Soul in Philadelphia? Did you yeah, see a lot of... That's got like an iconic lot. following around yeah. here. Uh, yeah, right. I know. It was, yeah, it was more Tecate. And actually... Uh, 
speaking of other loggers, Dos Equis, which is everywhere, that was one of my favorite logger adventures from my youth was being in the parking lot of a, a Phillies game back when they were horrible. Time is a flat circle. It would a week appear, ago, but, yeah. Right, back back when they were, before they won the World Series, they were horrible for a long, long time. Right when I moved there, and I went in the parking lot during some Dos Equis, and it was my first, I think that's right, first professional Major League Baseball game I went into, and it was amazing. It was like I, what I imagined the Coliseum being like back in Rome, but instead of the battles happening on the field, people could care less about the game. It was just people <laughs> fighting each other in the stands, throwing cheesesteaks at each other. It was um, it was amazing. Like to see, I remember walking in and there was a brawl, probably like a hundred people versus hundred people. Security guards trying to break it up, girlfriends crying and laughing. Pictures being taken, maybe I don't know. I don't know what you would take it with back then, a camera. Um, but um, anyway, and it, yeah, this logger got me there, and I'll never forget that. Of being like, this, uh, this is what baseball's like. Not, not usually, but uh, for well, me, and that night, it was, uh, it, it was, and it was a memorable one. We talked about the Cleveland Indians game, or That's right. maybe even riot a couple of last season. Uh, got some great feedback, and actually in the Facebook group, somebody shared a picture like that had oh, memorabilia amazing. from that night. That's Baseball, weird. American pastime, probably as much like <laughs> yes, baseball is America's Coliseum. There's there's fights when your team's not doing good. The actual game is only there to appease 25 percent of the attendance. Everybody yeah. else is there to eat a hot dog and drink their outside. first beer. That's yeah. it. Be, yeah, really enjoy nice. enjoy, <laughs> enjoy a, a day outside. A lot of great sunsets in that stadium. I saw many a game after that and many a fight. Speaking of baseball, if you're an yeah. Oakland A's fan, yeah, yeah, you're in a dig. This Vera Fabinho highlight John has for us this week. John, where are we going next? To the magical lands of Oakland? Is that right? That was a that was <laughs> I think a, technically a pun. Um the Oaky <laughs> lands of That's Oak. It. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so yeah. this week, the verified venue we want to kind of shout out is Degrees Plato Tap Room and Bottle Shop. They're out in um, mm-hmm. MacArthur Boulevard in Oakland, California, which is right near where the Oakland A's play. Yeah, and nice. they, at the time of recording, have the best record in American baseball right now. How about They're it? beating the Red Sox, the Indians. Uh, They're even beating the Dodgers, who were like the team to beat this year. So uh, good job, Oakland A's. And if you're one of the many, many people going to uh, a game when you're allowed, my recommendation from the other side of the country is stop into Degrees Play-Doh. I want to ask Harrison in a a minute if he can explain the beer reference in that Degrees Play-Doh or why that makes sense for this being a bottle shop. But The place looks beautiful. You can see their menu on Untapped. Uh, They're really active on social media. And right now they've got this beautiful outdoor beer garden set up where they are currently serving double dry hopped Pliny the Elder on tap. I think they have it to go. It's probably gone by now. Um, But if you want to sit outside and the A's aren't playing, or if you don't care about baseball and you like beer, uh, and you and, and you're fortunate enough to live near Oakland, Degrees Plato looks like a really cool place. It's probably I don't know based on California traffic, a 45 minute or three hour drive to the stadium. It's a couple of miles down the road from where the A's <laughs> play. Um, I definitely would encourage you to check that out. Uh, take a look at their menu if you want two reasons to be jealous of Oakland. But going back to the name, Degrees Plato, there's a beer reference in there. Is there not, Harrison? There is, yeah. So that's what, so Plato is a unit of measurement. It's really, it's a way to, Degrees Plato, a way to like um, kind of measure the density or the concentration of your liquid, which is how you, as a percentage of like the weight of it. So that's how you're going to find out the alcohol by volume of the beer you're drinking. If you're a commercial brewer using degrees, Plato to do that. And when you start, when you brew a beer the first time you take a reading of what the Plato is of that beer then before it's fermented. And then when it's done fermenting, you have a different reading, a different degree Plato. It'll drop and it kind of, you're able to use calculation to figure out the, that through that gravity scale based on the change of maybe it started at 12 and degrees Plato and ended at six. 
how much alcohol is in that beer. Um, it also gives you a good feeling of like the body of that beer, the mouthfeel of it. If it has if it has a higher concentration in an extract of sugar of unfermentable sugars, then it's going to have more of a body and have a higher degrees Plato number. So that's probably a little too nerdy, but essentially mm-hmm. it's just a way of right measuring the yeah the concentration of sugar in that wort that can become alcohol if it's fermentable or hang out and be marshmallow fluff flavors if it's not or whatever else you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> More real than IBUs are and yes. part of that whole, like you'll see like original gravity and final gravity. Yep. Yeah, Maybe we should one day do it. an yeah. episode and talk about that and forget sure. about IBUs. They're yeah. anyways, yeah. <laughs> maybe. They're, they're last week's news. Speaking of news and better news, let's finish up with our best beers of the week, John. And actually, I'll I'll start um, if that's fine with you. Take it uh, so, away. All right, good. So I had uh, the good fortune of coming across a new beer from Maine Beer Company. So if you guys mm. are familiar with them, they don't brew a ton of different beers. They're not that brewery that's got 900 beers and untapped. I think they have like 20, maybe 30. They've been around for more than a hot minute, but they recently released a beer called Spring um, that I believe is the first time at least it came down North Carolina. It's American IPA, um, and I got to enjoy it the other night, and it was delicious. So I think I said it was delightfully dank or something, and the main beer co liked my tweet about it. Um, so that's always fun when the brewery takes a second to say, I see you enjoying uh, our beers. Um, but it was great. It was just, you know, main beer it's, we've done, we did lunch before on the podcast and it's, they're just, um, sophisticated maybe. I just I really enjoy the way their beers taste, what they do with the hops, how they, you know, approach American IPAs, really stouts. I mean, I think they do is great. And this is fun to have something new from them. that was, di- wasn't, didn't taste like a lunch, didn't taste like another one, didn't taste like peeper. It was its own thing. Um, and, uh, and it was great. What about you, John? Um, you're you're correct about Maine. I didn't realize how frugal they were with their brewing. They only have 19 yeah. beers right. listed okay. on Untapped. Right. So uh, the- Anheuser Busch has over 450. <laughs> Bissell Brothers nearby, who only make amazing beers, they have right. like 120. Maine has 19. Yeah. Home brewers have more than that. It ain't broke. Um, that's right. Every Maine beer I've had has been delicious. Um, the beer I want to shout out this week comes from divine barrel out in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I love divine barrel. I feel like they make, they make fruity health conscious beers because Mm. fruits rich in vitamins. That's what I tell myself. I've had a few of their fruited beers. They've all been ridiculous. Uh, the one I had most recently that stands out is called it's a double rainbow. And basically it's 2x the fruit (laughs) of their Cadillac rainbows. They just took a popular beer they make called Cadillac rainbows that added a lot more fruit. They threw in lactose and the reason was just because, and generally (laughs) I'm not going to, I'm not going to crush a bunch of 8% fruited lactose beers, but divine barrel has a way of just making them taste like memorably good where you're like, Oh cool. Another fruited. uh, uh, Oh man. One sip in you're like, damn it. I should have bought two. So props to you, divine barrel. That double rainbow was incredible. That's awesome. That, that drew sounds amazing. Love when breweries just dumping lactose for the heck of it, but you're right, John. I mean, the way divine barrel does stuff, it's, it's just different. And that's, I mean, we're lucky they're right there. We can grab them pretty much whenever we, we want. And they also make great lagers. I had their American lager titled American Lager recently, and it was delicious. So doing it, that's the most impressive to me when you can make a crazy glitter bomb rainbow beer and then also clear as day lager. So in the true. Same building. Um, it's almost like magic. Well, that is going to do it for another episode of Drinking Socially. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, podcast, and untap.com, or Simplecast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, what's happening next week, John? Where are we? Are we going somewhere? Are we doing something? Yeah, so speaking of California, which we were doing a little while ago, Harrison, oh, yeah. here's a, a pop quiz for you. What 
What happens when the fog rises in Los Angeles? I don't know. What happens? When the fog rises in Los Angeles, you see LA. Uh, uh, I learned that joke in like 1993. It, um, it was funnier then. I didn't even know what UCLA was. But <laughs> anyways, aside from terrible jokes, there's there's a little bit of a tie into haze. Like Los Angeles apparently was a really hazy city at some point due to traffic yeah. and smog. Um, yeah. There's actually a brewer in Los Angeles called That's Smog. Right. So uh, <laughs> we're coming back in one week and we're going to talk about haze, but it's going to be the haze for days badge. And we're going to be talking about New England and lactose and, and hazy IPAs and the whole craze of days that have gone on in the last few years. So excited to talk to you in another seven days. Until then. Great. Yeah. Top off your glass and we'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Mm. Also, cheers. Um, yes. Yeah, good. I just took a big swig first. There we go. That's, that's fine. I got it.